What is happening, YouTube? So, I'm hoping you guys are having a great night, or at least, I hope you're at least trying to have a good night. But, nine games, losing streak. We had, we have not won a game since it was against the Toronto Raptors. Since last year, we started off the New Year's terrible. Just pretty fucking terrible. This is, there's no excuse for this. And Ty Lu, he continues to do the same thing over and over and over again. He did this three guard lineup. He stuck with all the veterans. He never utilized, you know, Robert Covington or especially the Abate and BJ Boston. And yes, people are saying, people, I feel like people are only saying just play Covington and all that, but I feel like the main target to get Ty Lu playing should be Diabate and BJ Boston, specifically Diabate, considering he's one of the most switchable bigs, pretty much not just in the in the Clippers, but honestly in the league. And Diabate failed to disappoint us, but apparently um, Ty Lu just refuses to play him, and the consequences is definitely showing a lot. And nine-game losing streak. So, I guess I'll get, but I'll give Ty Lu props for, well, some, well, at least where it's due, because this game, he at least limited Reggie Jackson's minutes. He finally started Terrence Mann, but then he screwed up against, again by taking Terrence Mann out when it was important, and he just subbed, it, subbed him in too late. He kind of, like, Went with Norman Powell for a little bit too long. And we just got cooked on defense as, as usual. And we lost to Atlanta. Atlanta is one of the most dysfunctional team in the NBA right now. Trey Young and Nate McMillan literally don't get along with each other. And we still managed to lose to the Atlanta Hawks. And <coughs> and after after the beating against the Denver Nuggets and the Wolves, you would think this is over, right? You would think, yeah, the Clippers will finally get it together. No, we just, we still managed to take an L, and this is and pretty much this is terrible. This is pretty damn terrible, and let's just. Look at all these abysmal stats, and let's and you know I'll just give my personal opinion. So you got DeAndre Hunter, DeAndre Hunter, ain't no way you should having this guy be 61% for under field goal. And DeAndre Hunter, Hunter, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't recall him being that like that type of player. And normally he would shoot like. In the 40s, 40s percent, which is that's average. But you have Hunter and Collins as shooting is 60 percent from the field goal, and you got Collins having like a near uh, double double. That is just pretty damn pathetic, just pure, purely pathetic. On Yeke Kongu, um, he didn't. Re he got nine rebounds and. And, you know, five points, nothing special. DeJounte Murray, six, 16 points. He was missing a lot of shots, but we still somehow managed to lose. Trey Young, Tra man, Trey Young. I mean, Trey, Trey Young is always, you know, he always plays pretty good, 30 points. And, of course, he gets his eight assists. And you got Bogdanovich with just five points. Jalen Johnson, 13 points, and yeah, but the Clippers just somehow failed to capitalize, and it was just many mistakes. We we didn't really attack Trey Young, which just makes no sense. 
because Trey Young is extremely undersized, and but for some reason, Clippers did not take advantage and attack Trey Young. The Clippers also just did the old-fashioned type, uh, you know, issue that I've been saying for the whole entire week, and and yet. They still didn't make too much of a change. I mean, okay, starting Terrence Mann was definitely a good start, but you still got Covington down as a DMP. You got Boston Jr. who brings in a lot of energy as a DNP, which is which is pretty darn garbage. But anyways, let's get into the stats. Nick Batum, I'm glad he's back. He definitely helped other all all around he got some rebounds assists and he got a block he didn't really score anything but he definitely did the little things that contributed Marcus Morris he, Ty Lue still had him play 30 minutes and yeah I get it like Morris is a tricky situation because Morris you could use him as a as a firepower type player but but at the same time, you're having guys like Rocco and Diabati sitting on the bench, or Boston Jr. just depends how you want to mix it up. And, and well, you know, Morris, he, he's just breaking out a lot of shots. You definitely got to know when you got to change change things up. And he did change up by taking out Reggie Jackson, which it I'm not going to lie, it helped within the, within, you know, the first half. But then, Terrence Mann, yep, he played d- dirty four minutes, but he low-key should have played probably like 40 minutes, honestly, or at least I guess sub him back in before before it was too late because that's where that's how Atlanta just made their run, and he still he's just for a little bit though, but he still did it though. He did the Powell. Uh, Terrence Mann is literally the power forward, and and then if each of Zubak as the center, and shout out to Zubak by the way, he got 18 rebounds and 17 points. If if anything good came out from this game, Zubak is definitely, definitely, definitely staying. Should not be included in the trade machines as well too because. He's pretty much the only other big, other than Moses Brown and Diabate. But he was definitely a big positive in this game. And then Kawhi Leonard, um, he returned, and <coughs> he definitely took a lot of shots. Uh, he shot at 39%, but he definitely played pretty smart. He went to the line a lot. He got four assists, seven rebounds. And, man, there's so much that Kawhi could do. But when you have a coach who would make wrong decisions and all that, it's just it would just stunt your growth. Terrence, man, yeah, should have played him longer. He literally he literally could have got a double double. If we're being honest with you, that man is special. He plays his heart out. Norman Powell, man, Terrence, man, should have had more of his minutes or even. Kind of split that minute with BJ Boston right over here because Norman Powell, yes, I like that he, that he's a really good bucket getter when when you would need him, but but apparently this game he was off and he did get four assists, so I'll give him that. But his defense is pretty streaky. Some de- sometimes he could play uh, de- fairly solid defense, but at the same time. Uh, Norman Powell is a little bit undersized. He's 6'3", 6'4". I, I think 6'3". Well, if you get play a guy like Boston or even Coffey, they're like 6'7", or 6'6", six, six, which has the better size. So that's that's definitely a main thing that Teron Lue definitely needs to mix it up and get Boston Jr. in the game because these vets, they have not been cutting it lately, and you got to mix it up. John Wall, a lot of people are split on John Wall. A lot of people like him, or and a lot of people do not like him. And 
John Wall, <coughs> he took a lot of shots this game. But at the same time, he did get five assists, and he definitely helped move the ball around. Um, I felt like maybe could have played him some more minutes, I'm not going to lie, because the ball would have moved around a lot better. And who knows, we could have won some of the the games, especially, for example, the Miami Heat game, because because the Clippers, they tend to go iso ball a lot of times. And John Wall, um, yeah, he's not the best in terms of if you want him to uh, score the ball, but John Wall definitely helps prevent iso balls from re- pretty much happening. He always would cause the ball to move around and – which resu- would result into better shots. So, um, I'm definitely with, you know, BJ Matthews about definitely getting Wall more minutes and all that. Reggie Jackson, wow. Okay, I know I'm hard on Tyron Lou and and I think I'm definitely open to to trying to try to get a new coach at this point because uh some. Okay, I'm. It's it's a really tough position whether whether should Teron Lue stay as a Clippers head coach or should we fire Teron Lue because yes Teron Lue definitely helped us came back against a really big deficit like a 2-0 deficit but at the same time he got us into a deficit by for example the first two games Terrence Mann. He played. He saw no minutes against Luka Doncic, so that was a that was a big example, and and yeah, that, and pretty much that's what really that's what really happened. So, um, and now he just ran a three guard lineup. He ran, uh, he really did run a three guard lineup before giving a guy like Diabate and. Boston Jr. any minutes, and and then now we're in a nine-game losing streak, which is beyond terrible. It's it's just pretty abysmal. And Reggie Jackson, um, he definitely he definitely got his minutes reduced, which is look. I know Reggie Jackson, he has a lot of clutch moments, but. Lately, he's not been playing good, so that was definitely a good idea to kind of, like, give him a break. And pretty much, hopefully during practice time, he definitely practiced on shooting the ball a lot and everything. He does have good charisma. He definitely brings the locker room energy pretty well. But, damn, he's been he's been struggling lately. Hopefully, 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 he pretty much, he, he finds his rhythm and he could eventually become Mr. June once again. But, but you know, that's one good thing that Teron Lou did is definitely not not play Reggie Jackson much this game. And he gave a lot more minutes to Terrence Mann and Moses Brown. Moses Brown? I also I also kind of told you in the beginning of the season, he is not as bad as as what you guys would think. Just because he's he hasn't been in the NBA for a while does not mean he's gonna be a bona fide bum. He he pretty much hustled pretty well. He got 10, 10 rebounds, and he almost got a double double, eight points, one block. And his defense is showing some promise, so I'm fine with him having him get minutes. But obviously, we want Diabate first. Or you could get Tyloo should really try to get creative. And he see the thing with Tyrone Lu is he gets creative in, in the wrong way. Instead of a three guard lineup, he should definitely explore either running. He should explore trying to run a. Moses Brown and a Diabate front court because Brown he could just stay inside. Diabate he's like he's a he's a center, but at the same time he's a power forward hybrid because how quick he is, you know, as a person in general. He's like 
He's extremely switch one. He would definitely lock it up in. I'm sure if Diabati played, no way in heck that he would Diabati and Collins would get 60% from the field goal. I, I could just definitely assure you that. And then, but yeah, I don't really have too much to say. To say. I'm just literally stammering right now because how bad we've been playing lately. And I don't know if I will even be making videos after every single losses because at this point, I'm literally a broken record. And I'm sure every other Clippers fans are pretty much a broken record as as well. And something needs to be done for sure. There needs to be a really, really big team meeting about this. Or there needs to be some type of, um, you know, maybe there, maybe Jerry West needs to really get into Tyrone Lou's head to, to actually, really, really, really switch up the rotations and actually finally play the youth, and and actually we can probably start a run, and and of course, a lot of people are gonna be saying. You know, Clippers, obviously, you need to make a trade and all that. That could definitely be, that's probably like a different subject because, you know, making a trade is definitely risky. And and a lot of a lot of these trade machines are definitely the trade machines that would dig us in a, a pretty big hole. But anyways, anyways, anyways. Definitely, definitely, definitely be sure to leave a comment down below. Just just please vent in the comment section because 9 and almost literally going to be a 10-game losing streak. This is just beyond painful. I'm, I'm expecting a lot of people to be pretty frustrated, frustrated in the comment sections. And that is just simple as that because seriously... The pass rotations are terrible, and and all the players who are getting DNP would be helping us a lot. But that should just definitely end the video. Um, take care and stay safe, and have a great night. As you all know, much love. Peace.